So today I'll be showing you some functions that I use across all of my projects. Basically, I'll create a class called, a static class called helpers. Um, I know other people use different names like extensions and stuff, but that doesn't necessarily make sense as they're not extension methods. Some of them are. Um, but these methods are super helpful and I, I, I copy and paste them. It's like the first thing I do when I start a new project. So um, here we go. So this first one is also the simplest. Uh, if you weren't aware already, calling camera.main is quite expensive. So what Unity is basically doing in the background is it's iterating over all the objects in the scene and it's trying to find the object with the tag main camera and then it's returning that. So you should always store a reference to your camera so that you're only calling camera main once at the, at the, at scene load or at script load or, or whatever it is. I was finding that I was having to do this in so many different scripts. So I figured I'd just chuck it in in uh, helpers and now it's always just available. This next one just allows me to cache my wait per seconds for my coroutines. So every time you create a new wait per second, you're allocating more garbage, uh, which the garbage collector then has to come and clean up. So let me just show you. In this top example, I'm just looping 100 times and then each time I'm creating a new wait per second. So that is 100 allocations that the garbage cleaner has to clean up. In this one, I'm just replacing it with my helper method, which will take in the time and seconds that you'd like to wait. It will look through our wait dictionary and try find a value with that, with that same key. And if it finds it, it will return it and then you can use it. Otherwise it will create it and add it to the dictionary and then return that. So this is a great way to reduce your garbage collection uh, in your coroutines. So this next one I use in every single project and I cannot believe it is not a default for Unity. So what this does is it will just detect if your mouse cursor or your, your finger press on a phone is over any kind of UI element. So for example, if you've got a game on the phone where every single time you press on the phone, it will jump, the character will jump. You don't want the character to jump if you're pressing the pause button or if you're pressing like a, an item on, on the bottom bar or something like that. So this will just return a Boolean um, to, to let you know. So the way it works is first we create our pointer data, which is just taking the, the mouse position. And then we're sending it, we're sending a raycast and we're returning the results. And basically if it returns anything, then we know that it's over a, over a UI element. So in this scene, I've just got the, some UI text and I've also got this, which is also an image on the canvas, my little sad ice cream. So you'll see here over UI and even when we go over the text, it's over the UI. All over here is not. So I'll show you how I implemented that. It's just a simple text equals, is, are you over the UI? Yep, no. So. It's a very handy method to have, and I use it in every single project. So this next one is awesome. Um, and it answers a question that I see posted all the time on the Unity forum, and that is how to spawn a particle effect on the canvas or to put a 3D object on the canvas. Um, so basically what this does is you give it a rec transform, any, any canvas element, and it will put in the, the rect, it will put in the rect position, it will input the camera. So right now I'm using the, the one from the top of this script and then it will out the result, which will be um, a vector three in world coordinates. So I've got a script here um, called cube, which I've put on a cube as you'll see in a minute. And basically I'm just setting its transform position to the output of this function. And I'll show you how, I'll show you it in action. So here's my cube, here's my uh, canvas element. And as you can see on the cube, I've got the canvas element selected. Now I can just move the canvas element around and it will follow it in world coordinates. So um, as an example, you could have some text up here in the, on the top right of the screen and every time it changes, you could spawn some fireworks or something. And uh, this function would tell you exactly where to spawn it in world space. So it lines up exactly behind the points or in front of the points or however you want to do it. And finally, this last one is one that I use all the time, but it's super simple and it just saves me from doing it constantly throughout 
throughout lots of other scripts. So basically you just give it a, a transform and it will delete um, all, the, all the child objects. So for example, I use this constantly in uh, user interfaces. So like if, if they click like this sort of character, I can delete all the previous characters and then show them these characters or items or what have you, or even uh, like units at the end of a level or something. If you want to destroy all the units and the and the world objects in the game, you can just give it the, the parent transform and this will just destroy them without you having to just uh, 4-H it every single time. All right, how was that? Did I teach you anything? Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, do so now, or I'm going to leave this cute little ice cream spinning for the rest of eternity. I'll just leave my computer on forever and ever and ever, and he'll just be in eternal hell. If you have any helper functions that you think would be handy, put them in the comments. I'd love to see them, and I'll see you next time.